Hi everyone, I'm Miss Katie from Rockland Public Library and happy Women's History Month. Today we are going to be reading Dancing Hands. Now Dancing Hands is a true story. It's called Dancing Hands, How Teresa Kierno Played the Piano for President Lincoln. And this story is by Margarita Engel and Rafael Lopez. And can you see, the story is called Dancing Hands. What are Teresa's hands dancing across? Can you see? They're dancing across her piano. Let's see what happens in Dancing Hands. When Teresa was a little girl in Venezuela, Mama sang lullabies while Papa showed Teresa how to let her happy hands dance across the beautiful dark and light keys of the piano. At first, making music seemed magical, but Teresa soon learned that playing a piano could be hard work. Sometimes she had to struggle to make the stubborn music behave as she practiced gentle songs that sounded like colorful birds singing in the dark and light branches of a shade dappled mango tree and powerful songs that roared like a prowling jaguar beside towering waterfalls in mysterious green jungle. Look at everything that she's imagining while she's playing. Have you ever sang a song or played a song and imagined yourself in that place? Imagined yourself right away into a magical, beautiful area? If Teresa felt sad, music cheered her. And when she was happy, the piano helped her share bursts of joy. By the time she was six, she could write her own songs. Wow, she wrote her own songs when she was six. And at seven, she performed in the peaceful chapel of a magnificent cathedral, playing hymns that shimmered like hummingbirds. Music was Teresa's delight. But suddenly, when she was eight, a war changed everything. Guns blazed, swords flashed, and poor Papa had to rush the whole family down to the seashore and onto a ship, into a storm where wind howled, waves rolled, barrels tumbled, ropes snapped, and clouds bucked and kicked across the wild sky like angry mules. By the time the ship arrived in New York, Teresa felt lost. She was homesick. How could she ever play happy songs again in this unfamiliar country where she did not know a single friend? Few people spoke Spanish. All around her, curious strangers stared and whispered as if her whole family belonged in a museum of oddities. Worst of all, they were fighting here, too. The Civil War, North battling South as soldiers marched and newspaper boys hollered about victories, defeats, funerals, and fears. Without a new piano, Teresa would have felt even more lonely, but soon she discovered that wherever one is, some people are friendly drawn together by song. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever noticed people being drawn together by song? Maybe when you start to sing, do, does anyone else join in to sing along? Or maybe when you start to make some rhythm, people like to join in. There's something about music that brings us together. Musicians came to her home playing along while they listened to the dazzling notes of her dancing hands. Determined to improve, Teresa practiced graceful waltz and sonnets, blooming symphonies and lively folk songs, her strong hands accepting the challenge of life, many, uh, life's many dark and light moods. People began to call her Piano Girl. Her picture was in newspapers and on posters advertising concerts where she performed with great orchestras that invited her to play solos. Teresa triumphed, oh, oh, Teresa triumphed 
in enormous theaters where children clapped and cheered while their parents stood up and tossed roses. Look at all the posters up about her. With Papa at her side, she tra traveled to elegant cities and by the time she was 10, the piano girl grew so famous that she received amazing invitations, including one so special that she could hardly believe her eyes. Can you guess who it might be? President Abraham Lincoln. President Abraham Lincoln wanted her to play for him, oh, for his whole family at the White House. But the country was still at war. So Teresa arrived at Washington DC at the time when freed slaves were signing up to be soldiers. The injured mourned, nurses groaned with the sheer weariness of caring for many fevers and wounds. Not long ago, the president's young son had fallen sick and died. Men argued about battles lost, battles won, speeches made, victories delayed. Teresa began to worry. How could music soothe so much trouble? Poor Abraham Lincoln. Teresa hoped she could entertain the president, his grieving wife, and their two surviving sons. Her fingers might stumble, the rhymes emerging too slow or too fast. But Teresa was brave and she believed in trying her best. So she entered the White House silently, clutching her papa's hand fiercely as they stepped into the room so red that it looked like a storm or a sunrise. Teresa remembered how it felt to be a homeless refugee and how lonely she had been surrounded by strangers, some of them rude and others kind. The memory of meeting past challenges now helped her fingers dance, celebrating the way life had turned out to be a mixture of all sorts of feelings, happy and sad. But the piano was poorly tuned, making her music sound ugly. What should she do? Refuse to play? She stopped, feeling discouraged, until Mr. Lincoln smiled kindly and asked her to fit play his favorite song, Listen to the Mockingbird. Teresa knew she could play this lively piece even on an imperfect piano. So her fingers leaped across all the glorious dark and light keys, improvising the way mockingbirds do. The mel melody changed as she went along. Music swirled, twirled, and soared on wings of sound. The president listened quietly to the notes that rose, swayed, rippled, and, and dipped like a bird in a blue sky above a green forest. He closed his eyes, nodding his head, stretching his long fingers, and tapped the tips on his shiny shoes. Tap, tap, tap. When the joyful song ended, Abe Lincoln stood up and clapped smiling at Piano Girl, who smiled too because she knew that her music had brought comfort to a grieving family, at least for one brief, wonderful evening of dancing hands. From then on, Teresa felt certain she would always be bold enough to share her musical courage anywhere in the world simply by letting her fingers travel across all the beautiful, dark and light moments of hope. The end. And there's even a little author's note at the end that tells us some more about Teresa, including, Teresa became known as a composer and opera singer, as well as one of the best pianists of her era. She was a pretty cool woman. So that is the story of Teresa Carano, and that is the story of Dancing Hands. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a wonderful week. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>